Thanks for joining me today. I'm Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Rust and Patina Brush Pack for Particle Shop. So I have a photograph of an antique bottle here that I want to enhance using the brush pack. In the layers palette, I have a few layers that I created ahead of time. So let's go ahead and get started. I have the image of my bottle here on a layer. I'm going to right click on that, and I'm going to duplicate it. On that duplicate layer, I'm going to go to Filter, Particle Shop. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so this fits better on the screen. I'll go to 150%. I'm going to make sure that my color is showing here, and I'm going to pin it to the screen. And I want to make sure I have the Rust and Patina brush pack selected. Let's go ahead and start up at the top with Aged Brass. You want kind of a tan yellow color like this. I'm going to do a test stroke here. And all you want to do is just do these zigzag strokes that kind of overlap and build up on themselves. And that gives you a nice aged brass effect. If you make your brush smaller, you get kind of a different pattern than you get if you make your brush much larger. So you can get a wide range of effects with this brush. If you wanted to make something like a sheet of brass, what we can do is we can just paint a large area like this. We'll go to Save. Let's save only the brush strokes, and we'll click on OK. That puts the brush strokes on its own layer here. I'll call that layer Aged Brass. And then we'll select the Rectangular Selection tool, make a selection here, and I'm going to go to Select Inverse. I'll hit delete to trim that layer and control D to deselect. And now we have this nice sheet of aged brass here. If we wanted to, we could transform it, let's say into perspective or fit it into the composition however we like. Let's go ahead and hide that layer. Let's go back to the bottle layer and let's duplicate it again. And we'll go back to particle shop and we'll try another brush. The next brush is aged veiny. If I do a test stroke here, you can see it gives us this nice veiny pattern. This blue-green color is known as patina, and it's an effect that you would see on old metal such as copper. So let's paint a little bit of that on top of our bottle here. Now, of course, we overpainted, but we can fix that. Let's go ahead and click on Save. We'll save only the brush strokes. I'm going to name that layer Aged Veiny, and I'm just going to hide it momentarily. And I want to share a really helpful trick with you. I've gone ahead and created a separate layer, and on that layer is solid black that covers only the bottle here. So it's just a silhouette of the bottle. And you can accomplish this in a lot of different ways. You could create a selection. You could paint over the image. I'm not going to go in depth how to do that in this tutorial. But if you do this, it's going to make your life a lot easier. So let's go ahead and hide that mask layer. We'll bring back Aged Veiny. We'll make sure the Aged Veiny layer is selected. And then I'm going to hold down Control. And I'm going to click on the layer icon here on this layer called Mask. That puts a selection around that mask. And then all we need to do on the Aged Veiny layer is create a layer mask down here in the bottom of the layers palette. And that will trim off that excess space where we painted off of the bottle. If we right click on the mask and we choose Disable Layer Mask, you can see we overpainted. But by adding this layer mask to this layer, using the selection we got from this mask, then magically this is going to keep all of our brush strokes only on our object here. And once we've created this mask, we can reuse it again and again. Another thing we might want to do to these brush strokes is help them blend a little more naturally with the background. On this aged veiny layer, it's set to a normal composite method, but we could also choose screen if we wanted it to blend lighter, or we could choose multiply if we wanted it to blend darker, or we could choose overlay if we want it to blend in naturally. And I think overlay really looks the best here, so I'm going to go with that. You could also play with the opacity of that layer if you wanted it to be a more subtle blend. Let's have it be a little more subtle like that. I'm going to go ahead and hide that layer, and I'll duplicate the bottle so we can try out another brush. Let's go back to Particle Shop here. Next is Deep Rust. We want to make sure we have a nice rusty orange color here selected. Let's do a test stroke, and you can see I get this nice rusty fractal pattern. And we could use this just to paint over the whole image. Maybe we want to use this as a background. So let's go ahead and just cover everything with this because we know that we're going to save this as the brush strokes, and we'll have it on its own layer, and we can make sure that it doesn't cover the bottle. But just try to cover everything here as best you can. If you want your pattern to be finer, you can make a smaller brush. You can make it really small, and you can get a really fine pattern. Or you can make it really big, and you can get a really big broad pattern. You can also kind of tap with this brush. I think something like that looks pretty good. Let's click on Save. Let's save only the brush strokes. Let's name that layer Deep Rust. And of course, it covers everything. So what we need to do is we'll need to control click on that layer that has our mask. But this time, we're going to go to Select 
inverse to turn that selection inside out. On that deep rust layer, we'll add a layer mask down here in the bottom of the layers palette. And now the background no longer covers the foreground. So essentially what we did there is we cut a bottle shaped hole into that layer that was on top of everything. I'm gonna go ahead and hide this layer. Let's duplicate the bottle. The next brush is filed rust. And if you were to take a power tool to a rusty piece of metal, then little filings might come off of it and they might look like this. So that's kind of what this brush does. If you use a smaller brush, you get smaller bits. If you use a bigger brush, you get bigger bits. The next brush is flaky rust. If we do a test stroke here, you can see flaky rust is nice and chunky. You can use light pressure if you want it to be a bit thinner and fainter, or heavy pressure if you want it to be nice and thick. We could put this on our object here or on our background, really wherever we want. The next brush is heavy rust. We do a test stroke with that. We get this nice fractal pattern, has a lot of texture and depth to it. Again, you can use light pressure to make it more faint and have it blend more with the background, or you can really lay it down thick with heavy pressure. The next brush is oxidized. We do a test stroke with that. You can see we get this nice powdery rust. After that, we have patina drip. I'm gonna go ahead and just paint some here on the bottle. And it's okay if it goes on the background because we know that we can fix that later. Let's go ahead and save that as brush strokes. And we'll control click on the mask, create a layer mask there, and we'll set the blend mode to overlay. Do a before and after, and you can see you get that really nice drippy patina effect. And of course, we could layer that up with our aged veiny. We could bring back in our deep rust, and you can see we're starting to get a pretty nice composition. Let's return to Particle Shop, and we'll look at the next brush, which is patina. Similar to patina drip, except you get this bigger, broader pattern like this. If you want the pattern to be smaller, then you use a smaller brush. If you want it to be larger, then you use a larger brush. The next brush is rust bands. You can create these horizontal streaks of rust very easily. You can paint straight down like this, or you can go kind of side to side. Moving on to the next brush, there is rust drip. This gives you these nice drips of rust. If you want drips that look a little bit more wet and fresh, you can use a smaller brush, or you can use a bigger brush if you want them to be more textured and rough. Next to that, we have rust splat. If you do a little dab here, you can see it builds up as this ring shape. So that means that if you kind of spread it out a little bit here, there's gaps in between some of the particles, which helps it look kind of like a splatter. So all you do is just kind of zigzag this in here. And then of course you can make your brush smaller if you want the splat to be smaller or larger if you want it to be larger. The next brush is sharp rust. Sharp rust is very jagged like steel wool. If you use lighter pressure, it's a little bit more flaky and sparse. If you use heavier pressure, then it's very thick. The next brush is soft rust, and soft rust is very soft and light. We could put in just a little bit here on our bottle if we wanted to, if you wanted to add just a little rust to it. And then last but not least is tarnished, and tarnished gives you that nice tarnished metal look. We'll put a little bit of that here on our bottle. Maybe use a smaller brush to get a few smaller patterns here. We'll save only the brush strokes. We'll get that selection of our mask. We'll create a layer mask. Go ahead and just label my layers so that I know what they are. On that tarnished layer, I'm gonna set the blend mode to multiply, and I'm gonna reduce the opacity, do a before and after, and you can see I get that nice tarnished look. So I'll just bring in a few extra layers that I added here to show you the finished version of this. You can see that it was fun and easy to turn a boring photograph into a creative work of art using the Rust and Patina brush pack in Particle Shop. If you enjoyed this tutorial, take a quick second to click the like button, and make sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more Particle Shop tutorials like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.